Hello everyone, welcome to the Villa Together podcast with myself, Chris Ellis. Once again, I'm joined by Ian Gillett and I'm delighted to welcome a very special guest today, which is ex-Aston Villa player, Brett Holman. Brett, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. I think uh, we were just discussing a little bit off air just then. Uh, I think we're doing a little bit better than you guys, unfortunately, but uh, no, I'm doing great. So uh, happy to be uh, on this podcast with you boys. Nice one, nice one. Much appreciated. Um, right, diving in, uh, your time at Aston Villa. Um, yep. So obviously you signed for us in 2012, uh, signed uh, free transfers. It was agreed, I think, in the March of 2012. Um, yep. You'd been, you were at AZ Alkmaar at the time. You'd had a, a reasonably successful time there, won the league with them, played Europa League. When it came to, obviously, you were at that point where, where your contract was coming towards an end with them. So, obviously, you had opportunities to to move on. Yeah. What kind of, what was the key decision or decisions in, in for you deciding to to come to Aston Villa? Um, I think, uh, you know, obviously, one was was that little sort of um, Aussie sort of sort of background, I suppose. When you look at Mark Bosnich, when, when, when back in the day, when, when he first went there, he had great memories there. Um, you looked at the club and, and the history of the place. Um, it said a lot. Uh, huge club, massive club, big history. Um, there was interested parties elsewhere. I know that West Ham was 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 an interested party uh, even probably a year before with Abraham Grant. Um, but but you know at that moment you know I had good chats with Alex McLeish who was at that stage the <laughs> manager. But um, you know it, it, it felt right. It, it, there was there was there was a good feeling and and. I think the majority of the footballers in, in and around the world, uh, the majority of the time we follow our gut and our, and our feeling and, and, and that feeling was, was great. I had a great feeling every time I, I went there for my first uh, uh, sort of tour around um, uh, the, the massive training ground and the beautiful facilities. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is the place I want to be. Yeah, I think to be fair, I mean, obviously with us being fans, when we look at the training ground, when we look at the stadium, you look at it and you think, well, you know, there's no place I'd rather be. So to play here, yeah. you know, must be incredible. Um, <laughs> obviously, you mentioned Alex McLeish. Tell us about when you, you, you know, you came to the club. I think it was your first day, possibly, and you, you bumped into yeah. Alex McLeish. Um, tell us about that that story. Um, obviously, Alex it McLeish. Was, it was harsh. It was harsh, I suppose. In in uh, well, welcome to England. But it wasn't, it wasn't, look, I had great chats with him in March. I did my first medical, like you said, because you could sign on a free transfer after January because you had six months to go on your, on your uh, last contract with AZ. Um, everything went well. You know, medicals were fine. Uh, finally, contract was finished with AZ, so I could uh, get to move over and, 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 you know, settle into Birmingham life, basically. Um, it was, I think it was my first day. Or, or it was at least sort of like the, the, the end of the season, um, when everything was getting sorted, so I could walk into the training gown, uh, ground, you know, meet everybody, meet the chefs, meet the gear man, meet the assistants, and all that sort of stuff. And and Alex McLeish was walking out with his box, um, and 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 that was it, you know. And and it was a little bit scary at first because I was like, well, hold on, he was the one who signed me, sort of not knowing obviously the club signed me, um, but but it was like, okay, where to from now? And and he basically said, you know, he wished me good luck. Um, you know, he, you know, basically was disappointed that he couldn't stay on because, uh, you know, he had a, he had a good passion and, 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 a, and a massive drive to do well. Unfortunately, it didn't it didn't work out at Villa, but um, that was a, probably a scary situation because I really felt that I was in limbo, even yeah. though it was probably one of the most exciting moves of my career, basically. So, um, yeah, it was it was a it was a scary um, time in in that little period before Paul Lambert came in. What was did you find it? Difficult in a way to go from this is you know I suppose coming to England and you're expecting Alex McLeish and then the manager the first manager you work under is Paul Lambert. Yeah. Um, did you find that difficult kind of I suppose I say going between the two I suppose you, in theory you didn't really work under Alex McLeish but I suppose he's the man who's put in the legwork to get you to Villa. Correct. And then obviously then you're working under Paul Lambert. Was that was that difficult yeah. to kind of work between? I think it I think it is, and and I suppose it's it's a, it's a little bit of a different sort of type of method that happens in the UK, where you know the managers have got a lot of power. You know, if they want a big signing or they want a big player, and they want it, like you said, it does the legwork and 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 
you know, for me, I was lucky. Alex McLeish liked me, so he was doing that legwork to get me to the club. It's a little bit hard when when Paul Lambert sort of, you know, I wasn't on his radar. So it's it's always a little bit difficult, especially in the UK, where you know the managers bring in players. Whereas in Europe, a lot of the time you've got a you've got a team of of coach, sporting director, a general manager who make all the decisions. Whereas a little bit in the UK, it's sort of like that you've got. You know, it's getting more more into that with technical directors and all that sort of stuff. But you usually see that the manager's got a big role to play in signing players. And I suppose when when you see that the manager does sign you and then he walks out the door before you've even started, it's a little bit scary in, in regards to, oh, Jesus, the new manager might come in and it's like, yeah, I'm not having him anyway. And then, and then yeah, you, then you're going to be in trouble. So it was a little bit daunting. Um, but, yeah, on the other hand, I was there. So uh, let's make the most of it. Yeah, I think good point you mentioned about, you know, especially in the UK, the managers do have a lot of power. I think, you know, we've seen it, obviously support Aston Villa for many years. We've seen it with all sorts of different players. You could have a group of players or, you know, a couple of players who have been potentially performing well. And yeah. it's just that overall the results aren't right. New manager comes in and then those players, for whatever reason, aren't fancy by the new manager and it just that just seems to happen you know because Correct. they weren't the ones bringing them in so obviously it kind of yeah. almost puts you on the back foot straight away doesn't it you know in yeah. theory because you know I suppose it'd be kind of like you know anyone in every you know day working you go to an in, you go to an interview you, you speak to somebody they give you the job and you turn up and you're like oh who's this guy yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of I suppose daunting and it kind of puts Correct. extra added pressure on doesn't it so it does it does you know you walk in with a bit more confidence when you know that the manager is the one who brought you in. So yeah. you sort of walk in there with your chest up a little bit and then all of a sudden that, that, that deflates really quick just because it's like, oh, you just got to keep your head down and almost sort of go unnoticed in a way um, just, just to, yeah, sort of get by and keep your spot, I suppose, in, 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 a, in, a, in a certain area. I suppose yeah, if you look at it now, if you look at Deli Ali's situation, is a sort of a little... A little example, you know, obviously you still have to perform no matter what, but, but you know, under Pochettino, he was, he was fantastic. And then, and then, you know, you see how it's sort of gone downhill a little bit. So it's, uh, you know, it does happen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. hundred yeah. um, percent. Yeah. Obviously he came in, I think, I think um, it was actually your first game, your first preseason game, you scored, uh, you scored in yeah. another, so you had a relatively decent preseason. We had a relatively mm. decent preseason overall. It comes into the season we have a poor start and I think yeah. overall the season itself was, it was a pretty poor one. I think we were five points outside of the, the bottom three at the end of the season. Yeah. There were some, there were some, some pretty low, low points during, during the season. There was the, we lost eight nil against Chelsea, yeah. um, knocked out by Bradford in the league cup, um, you know, yeah. kind of where we, we on paper, I suppose, looked like, the, looked like the favorites. Should have win. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, that was that was a tough one, uh, tough, tough for us fans to take with mm. those defeats like that. What about being part of the, you know, being part of the squad and the team at that time and the the atmosphere? How how kind of low would a team after those kind of defeats? It was I, I, it was hard. I think it, it, I suppose I, I'm going to compare it to the time when just before it, and, and that's what I was doing a lot when I was even at Villa when the results weren't going down our way. If you look at if you look at sort of when when you're in a, a winning side, if you put it like it, like you said, when when we when we won the league with AZ in, in Holland, when 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 you've got that camaraderie and and you know everybody's around and and lifting each other up and, and stuff like that, it didn't feel like that around around the training ground. It didn't feel feel like that, um, you know, match days stuff like that. It, the only thing I sort of look back on and and I, and I sort of don't want to reflect on other people's performances, but it's, it was like everybody was sort of battling with themselves a little bit yeah. um, where, you know, there weren't too many. If you look at it, like you said, you were five points off bottom three and, you know, there weren't too many standouts in that, in that season. Anyway, we had a lot of great players, but, but, you know, I, I don't think there'll be too many players who'd be putting their hands up saying, yeah, I think, uh, I think I deserve a, 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 an above average um, for, for, for that season. And, you know, you, I don't think you can sort of fault the effort because I think they, you know, every player wanted to, to, to give everything because they wanted the results. I think it was just one of those, one of those things where it, it was the group of players and, and, and it just didn't click. Um, it was a new manager in who was trying to implement his sort of style that maybe needed some time. It, was, it, it could have been a whole lot of things, but 
yeah, to look back on it, it was it was it was really tough. Um, it was a tough thing, especially coming from a team that was that was winning, you know, 80, 90 percent of games in a season. Um, and 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 yeah, it was it, it was hard, but but you know, on the other hand, it was it was it was definitely something that 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 I liked because it's a great challenge to 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 have and 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 to fight for. But like I said, it was it was a we were, we were in a tough we were in a tough spot the whole year. You know, there was you know we had some great results as well. When you go to Liverpool away and win three zero, I think it was, and you know you had some cracking results, but then you had some bloody absolute disastrous results as well. And and I think we had you know too many bad performances than than good ones in in, in that year. Yeah, I mean, I think in all fairness, what he, I think like you say, it was probably a combination of things. New manager comes in. I think obviously. When looking in at it for us guys, there was a lot of changes. Like we went from, you know, we had we had Martin O'Neill to Gerard Houllier to Alex McLeish. Yeah. Paul Lambert comes in, and going from beforehand, we were spending a lot of money, and then under Paul Lambert, it was like he was given a different, uh, you know, a different kind of strategy. It was like, well, you need to not spend as much money. Yeah, and obviously, it showed that eventually. I know, I know, it wasn't under Paul Lambert, but it showed eventually that that kind of things weren't working when we got relegated, and yes. those few years were kind of were, were tough. So obviously, for you yep. being being part of that, as you say, you, you're going for a win inside in Holland. You come to a side that we were for three or four seasons treading water just to stay above yeah. re- relegation. So obviously, for you coming in and being part of that, you know, just adds adds to the kind of the difficulties of not only moving to a new club, but also moving to a completely, you know, different country. Yeah. Different environment, different, even, even, you know, you, you can say it's, it's still Europe, but um, even just the way of, uh, 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 you know, going about things, you know, the Dutch are very, uh, you know, over analyzing everything, you know, a lot of team meetings, a lot of tactics, whereas, whereas, you know, the UK stuff, it wasn't like that, or, or especially what we experienced. You could probably ask Ron Fla. Yeah. And, 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 and Kareem Alamani because we sort of came the same year anyway yeah. and we sort of experienced that, that, that same sort, sort of type of thing and, and, and like you said as well um, it, it, it was at that stage where, where you know, it was in the press um, Paul Lambert wasn't given the amount of money that, that you know, those, you know if, you, if, you, if you call them those so-called you know, higher you know, well-known managers um, back in the day but, you know, on, on the other hand, if you look at it, it, it was that period where, you know, you probably had to be a little bit smarter. You know, Martin O'Neill spent a lot of money. Um, you know, th- these are the type of things where you, you can't just keep spending money um, if, if, if it's not getting any better anyway. Um, of course, you know, Martin O'Neill did get some cracking results. But, you know, like you said, in that four or five period, it, it, it wasn't great. Um, and I think, yeah, I suppose it, it wasn't nice to play in the championship either. But if you look at it, it was probably a blessing anyway because it sort of put things really back into reality to say, hey, you can't just keep spending money and giving out, you know, these, these monstrous wages and, 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 and not see anything back, really. Um, and, and, yeah, I think, I think if you look at it in hindsight, it was probably a good thing that it actually happened. No, no, totally, totally agree. So, Brett, in regards to that season, obviously we've gone over a few of the, the low points and you did mention uh, a few notable highs with the, the Liverpool game. There's also probably the, uh, the quarterfinal away leg at Norwich where you had a big yep. part to play in that result. Um, just talk us through that Liverpool game to start with. Um, away at Anfield, very much the underdogs, um, not having a great season, very inconsistent. But just talk about that win and um, how it sort of may have galvanised the squad. It was, um, it, do you know what? It's it's one of those games where it should really lift you for 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 a certain period after that, um, after after such a win against such a side, in in such a place. Um, I was actually speaking to a couple of friends of mine recently about that game, where when we, I think it would have been the first twenty minutes, I don't think we even touched the ball. Um, there there would have been about you know, and and, and you, if you ask the bloods who were actually on the field. There was, it felt like there was probably about 20 Liverpool jerseys on the field at that moment because they just come out of the gate so fast. Um, you know, you got Steven Gerrard and, and Luis Serrares just just going absolutely bonkers. But, um, you know, that win when, you know, Benteke scores, I think Andy Wyman gets, gets, gets one as well or a double. I'm not quite sure who gets two. Um, and and it, it should, like I said, it should lift you for, for, 
for for you know that next sort of period on in in, in such a huge win. You know the, the the dressing room after was absolutely fantastic. It was it was you know the spirits were up. It, you know it was a huge result. Um, still got a nice little scar from Joel Cole who gave me a nice little stud mark. Uh, you know almost knee high. So that was a nice little uh, wall mark. But um, you know it, it, it was a great experience and and. You know, those are the those are the games that, like you said, they're, they're the ones you remember. You know, you play at Anfield away, you know, you hear the song, and then and then, you know, the, the home team sort of walks 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 into the tunnel with their tails between their legs with three nil, and and you know, you've got an absolutely fantastic feeling. Yeah, definitely, it was a it was a great result and uh, one that we very much remember as uh, Villa fans. Um, yeah. In terms of that, like you talk about that squad that we had at the time, there was quite a few sort of um, young players, the likes of uh, Albrighton, Barry Bannon, Nathan Baker yeah. as well. I, I think I remember that day Nathan Baker having an absolute worldie of a game. He, he was on the end of everything in the air and mm. blocks here, there and everywhere. Um, they had a very young Raheem Sterling playing for them that at the time was just coming into sort of that form that we now recognise with him consistently. So yeah, it, was a, it was a massive win. Um, yeah. In terms of that season as well, what was it like um, scoring your first goal uh, in the away game at QPR at Loftus Road? It was um, it was sort of a weight off my shoulders. I think that's with every every player who comes to a new club and 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 you know gets their first official goal um, for their club. Weight off my shoulders. Um, we were still in it. You know, we were, we, that whole season we were in a bit of a tough a tough area. So you know, I think we went one. I think I scored one nil up, and we unfortunately drew one one. I think it was a QPA that day, but um, it was a great. Uh, it was a great uh, feeling to actually score my first goal for for the club. Um, you know, if, if you know, asking about scoring, the only regret was was not scoring at the Holt end. Um, you know, it, 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 for my career, you know, in, in one of those whole things to actually celebrate in front of those fantastic fans that was that was probably one of those things that still eats away at me in a way. But um, you know, it it was a great it was a great feeling and uh, and. Uh, yeah, scoring in the Premier League was it was a dream for me anyway. So uh, it was it was something that came true. Yeah, definitely such a, such a great moment for yourself. What do you think it was um, in terms of the structure of the team and and the way we were coached that season, where we did have a quite sort of a few notable highs, but there was a lot of lows as well. Where do you think the sort of inconsistencies lay with us and, and that team? Ah. Was it just for the nature of how the squad, how it was made up with the younger players as well, or? Was there something? I think I, th I think it was. I think there was. The, there could be a combination, you know. And I think if I knew that, we, we you could put your finger on it, and, and we we could have changed it somehow. But um, there was there was a combination of everything. Um, new manager, um, uh, new players, foreign players, um, younger players, um, older players who weren't maybe performing as much. Um, the manager who maybe wanted certain players off the wage bill, as well at that stage. Um, you know, there were, there were so many different things that that uh, you you could put it down to, and and obviously if if those things don't all come into one, or, or you know they don't happen at the same time, put it that way. Um, if if the manager wants players who he doesn't see fit in in his sort of system and his sort of vision, it's hard to just push them on, you know, because if players are on certain wages, they can't just you know say rock up, we're going to go to another club. It doesn't work like that. So um, I think it was I think it was difficult. Um, Especially for a manager like like you know coming in and, and you know trying to implement something, but but maybe not having the means or, or, or maybe the backing as well, I suppose in in, in a certain extent. Um, and also, like like I said, I don't think there was too many overachievers that year. I think there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, performances where you know a lot of players battled with with themselves to 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 really perform and 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 stand out and and, and push the team on. So. It was it was it was just a really really hard season. Yeah, definitely was. Um, I mean, in terms of that that start of that season, there was a lot of goodwill towards Paul Lambert and the style of football that he had previously played at Norwich. I remember yeah. going to the Norwich away game the season before you joined, and uh, all the Villa fans were chanting when he was the Norwich manager for him to come and manage Aston Villa <laughs> the following season, which it happened. It happened. So um, there was a, quite a few false dawns under Lambert and. I suppose football, you can put it down to certain moments and certain big moments and, and probably for us to go out in the semi-final against Bradford in the League Cup that season. Um, yeah. Whereas if we win that game, 
we get to a final, uh, we potentially yeah. win a final, and it's a very different story for sort of Lambert right. and his tenure. Um, yeah. So before we move on, just sum up your time uh, at Aston Villa uh, with a few words for us. Huh. It was um, it was short. It was definitely short. Um, now nah, look, it, you know what? It, it was a dream come true. It was definitely a dream come true. It was it was something that I always wanted to to experience, and and I'll never forget um, the club, the people who work there, and, you know, the lifetimers there who, who who spend their whole life and they dedicate their whole life to 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 such a fantastic club. Um, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, you know, unfortunately, it, it, you know, it was one of those things that just didn't work out for me. Um, but, you know, I still follow the Villa now um, and, 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 and still go for them when they're playing games. And, and uh, you know, like I said, you know, when they were in that tough time in the championship, I was still hoping when they were winning games and when Midland Jedinak was there and, 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 and following him uh, and, and hopefully, you know, getting them back into the Prem. But, um, yeah. The, one of the greatest experience that I'll ever experience, and 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 like I said, a dream come true to to play in the Premier League and and for such a fantastic club. Was it? Yeah. What about when when you when you left? Was that because I you know that season I think you you played 29, 29 yeah. times overall. So you know you played a good chunk of that season. Yeah. You know, was it a case that you felt you know you hadn't settled at the club and, and you wanted to move on, or or because because you weren't a, a kind of a Paul Lambert sign in that, it no, was kind of yeah. a, a, a bit of both, so to speak. It was. It, it could. It could have been a bit of both. Look, I had a frank chat. Honestly, there was a, there was a frank chat with, with 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 the manager straight after the end of the season, and and basically putting it into the words where I wasn't one of his signings. Um, and the bottom line was that that I, I'd be very rarely used the, the next coming seasons. Um, you know, I honestly said to him, uh, uh, you know, I still do have a contract, and, and Aston Villa gave me that contract for three seasons, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and, uh, uh, you know, have a dig if possible. But you know, if 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 you're basically saying I'm not gonna play, then uh, then then I suppose it's a good thing to to look elsewhere, which we did, and and I think in the end, you know, when when you get that sort of message that you, you know, it wasn't in those sort of words where you're not wanted, but that that's how it came across. Then then. I think it's better for both parties to 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 move on in that sense and and you know shake hands and 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 go each other's ways. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's almost like football in a nutshell, isn't it? The, the kind of I suppose the bad side to football in terms of you sign you sign for a club, massive move for you in your career, and yeah. then and then you you turn up and the manager who who signed you has moved on, and yeah. it's kind of. You know, it kind of always puts you on the back foot, back foot straight away, doesn't it? It is, it is, and and you know what, I I, I gave I gave everything, and and you know that that preseason, I, I you know I, I don't think I've never worked so hard in, in in my entire life because I knew, you know, I, I had to do double as work, double as much, um, because the manager didn't bring me in basically, um, and and you know I, I tried to prove to him that you know I was worthy of of those games that he he played me in. And um, you know, like I said, unfortunately, I, I didn't score enough or assist enough, and and you know, I think we were in that sort of team that didn't help either, yeah. um, where you know you you know you couldn't perform or or or, or you know it, it was just everybody was struggling with themselves, and and it was one of those things where it just didn't click, and and you know you can't put it down to anybody. That's just you know, like you said, that's football in a nutshell, yeah. and and. You know, you, you you just acknowledge it, I suppose, in a way, and 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 move on, and and you know, create another path, basically. What about then? Just before we, we kind of almost go back to to the the start of your your time mm. in Holland, what about leaving Aston Villa? Then you ended up in in Dubai. Um, yeah. What what was that move like? Because um, I suppose moving to a country where I know football is obviously it's getting bigger now and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But obviously at the time where football in Dubai wasn't necessarily a, a big thing, whereas you've come from Holland and England to, you know, yeah. Yeah, to go yeah, into there. No, it, it, exactly. No, it, it, do you know what? It, I, I, I don't regret moving there at all. Um, I, I think I, I, you know, the, the, I suppose I do regret maybe not ha- holding out for maybe another Premier League club. Or another club in England. That was the only thing, maybe, if you really look at it in hindsight. But 
on the other hand, I, I don't regret moving to, 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 you know, the, what is it? The UAE. Um, the experiences that me and my family had there were, were uh, memorable. And, uh, you know, like you said, the football is completely different. It's, it's, a, it's so hard because it's so hot. Um, uh, you know, there's only three or four foreign players, which creates that extra pressure because you always have to perform because you are the foreign players. So, you know, there, there, there's, there's all different types of things to, 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 I suppose, you know, add that sort of pressure. It's not the pressure of, of you know, playing for 40,000, you know, players at, at Villa Park, but, it's, but it's, it's a different pressure that, you know, you have to put on yourself to perform every single week because, you know, there are, there are fans there who, who, who love their clubs as well, um, but it's just not as, as, you know, big and popular and, 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 and as fanatical as it is in, in the UK and, and in Europe. It's, as, it's as, probably as simple as that. Yeah, I suppose it's one of them, you know, going to UAE and, and Dubai, it's kind of got its, its different experiences, hasn't it, in, in terms of going, yeah. going there because Dubai is such right. a, an amazing place. Yeah. Um, I suppose as well, you know, taking you, you and your family into consideration that that yeah. was a, 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 you know, an amazing experience for, for all you guys. I think, I think it was more, you know, my wife's Dutch. So, um, you know, I was in, I was in Holland for 11 years. I went to the UK. Um, obviously it was only one year when, when we envisaged, envisaged it to be, uh, you know, a lot longer, but then I thought to myself, I don't want to go back to Holland. Um, because, you know, obviously that's where I built my name up. Could I have gone to Europe somewhere else maybe and, and tried your luck in a Germany or in Italy or something like that. But then I thought, you know, this popped up, let's, let's, you know, do the 180 or the 360, whichever way you want to call it, and 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 try something completely, you know, out of out of, you know, this, you know, sort of picture, I suppose, in regards to getting out of Europe and and try something completely different, and and that's what we did, and you know, we ended up staying there for three years, and and yeah, it was fantastic. What about then? We'll, we'll go back to the kind of the start in terms of your your football career yeah. in in Europe. What was that like moving from Australia to to Holland? When it, when it, first it, was, it, it was it was tough it was it, it was hard obviously because it, it, I left so young that was probably the toughest part um, the, the the greatest thing that I had was you know there was a couple of other older Aussies who were just slowly paving the way in in, in Holland Brett Emerton was there at Feyenoord. Um Jason Kalina was at, was at Ajax who ended up playing at Peace V um, so there was there was a couple of names who already sort of made yeah, sort of paved the way for the Aussies, you know, so it made it, it probably made it a little bit easier, put it that way, because Brett, Brett Emerton was performing really well. They won the, um, what did they win? They won the Europa League, uh, the Europa Cup against Borussia Dortmund and, and stuff like that. Um, went to Feyenoord, uh, had a great tournament. They gave me a, a contract and, and you know, it was hard because I was I was only 17 and, and you know, going, you know, the other side of the world without mum and dad and, and, you know, learning how to cook and clean and all that sort of crap. And, uh, and, and, you know, it, it was daunting, but, but it, it was, it was, it was the best thing that, that, that ever happened to me because, you know, you know, you, you learn to grow up real quick and, and, and be a man because otherwise, if you don't, you're going to sink pretty quick and, and you're going to go home between, uh, with your tail between your legs. And, and, you know, that was something that, that, that I didn't want, want happen to me. So uh, it was, it was, uh, it was grow up real quick. Obviously you, you know, like you say, playing at, by an odd, I suppose you kind of your success would have been at AZ Altmar. Yeah. Like, like we said earlier, winning the league, playing in the Europa League. What was that yeah. experience like of, of being part of a title winning side in, you know, a, a big league like the U.S. Yeah. yeah. Look, if I suppose you, you know, if you look at if you look at it now, there'll be debates in regards to in regards to you know UK's a, a big league. Uh, the 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 Serie A is a big league. You probably look at the Bundesliga maybe in, in that tier as well, and then you probably, you know, maybe even France, and then you go below where you look at your your Dutch and your Belgiums and that sort of stuff. But I suppose if you look at that top top three of Feyenoord, PSV, and Ajax, and and for us as AZ to actually break the trend, and 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 it, you know it wasn't a miracle, but and and it, and it wasn't a Leicester City sort of type of uh, championship, but. But it, it it was it was a really really big deal because you know PSV or you know you're talking about the big boys with uh, Matteo Kesman, Van Bommel, uh, uh, you know Andre Oya, these sort of bigger bigger players, Ajax who we played with, um, you know that was before when we when we won who were developing, Snyder, Van der Vaart, Ibrahimovic, uh, Mido, 
you know, the big clubs. And, 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 and I think at AZ to, to, you know, like I said, break that top three was, was an absolutely huge achievement. And, and, uh, and, and yeah, you know, they, they were, they were that, that, that four years that I spent there was probably my best time career wise, uh, playing wise, performing wise. Um, that would, that was probably my, my best period. About playing European football, you know, uh, Europa League with, with AZ, you know, what was that yeah. like as an experience? Obviously, you know, going Huge. moving all over the place, Huge. going to different countries, etc. Massive experience. We played the Champions League once after, straight after, obviously, winning the league. Yep. Um, had a crappy, uh, I've had a crappy um, a group for, uh, stage. I think we drew with Arsenal at home and absolutely got smashed at Emirates. Um, uh, went to Olympiacos and, and had standard Liège. But, you know, the experience was like, you know, going back to Europa League. Europa League was absolutely fantastic. We made the quarterfinals once, which was which was fantastic, uh, and played Valencia. Um, you know, we, we, we played some, you know, big sides. And, and, and I suppose that put me in good stead, especially traveling a lot. And, and it helped me a lot, especially when, we were, you know, I started getting picked for the national team. You know, that traveling and learning how to take care of your body and, and focus on the game one after another. And you're playing three times a week. It, it, it helped me a lot to, to really understand how how you had to take care of your body and, and, and you know, be a little bit selfish and say, look, I can't do this. I have to, I have to put my feet up and, 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 just, uh, and just take it easy. We, we mentioned earlier about when you were at Villa and the, the managerial change. What about yeah. the, the kind of managerial changes you went through while in Holland? Because obviously there were some, some interesting managers that you played <laughs> under. Yeah, cracking, cracking... Um, Cracking characters. Uh, Louis Van Gaal was was uh, was an absolute uh, uh, genius. I would almost say um, in regards to, to, to just the football. You know, he was he was such a hard man to to, to communicate with. Um, he was so passionate about his football. Uh, 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 yeah, you know, he, he was he was. You know, everybody knows him at Man United. That the that the. the you know the crazy Dutchman. I think it was all, it was one of them. But um, you know, he, he it was because he was so passionate about it that that, that you know he, he took it. He took himself over the edge a lot of the times where you know he didn't know how to express himself. But you know, he was probably the only manager that I ever experienced that he would come in at half time and actually tweak things in our formation and maybe sub players, and he'd win us the game. And 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 I would you know players would look and just say, "Wait, this guy's having one." When, when, you know, he would change things at halftime, but he would actually win us the game. Um, yeah, huge, huge. And he was the one who actually signed me from my old club at NEC. So, you know, that was just a big, a big thing for me. You know, manager of Ajax, won the, won the you know, UEFA Champions League, went to Barcelona, you know, just a huge, huge icon, I suppose, of, of Dutch football in, in, in that stage. And, you know, he went, he went uh, Ronald Koeman came after that. Um, so yeah, that was that was another you know small name, but um, uh, unfortunately he got the sack real quick. Um, results didn't go our way. It was just a little bit of a crappy period, and and I think it was probably a good experience for for Ronald at that start, at that time because he sort of let us do things what we wanted to do in regards to we won the league. He came in and he thought, okay, we'll just keep that going. I think he needed to be a little bit tougher on on us, and 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 I think he learned from that. So um, yeah, he was brilliant. Um, and then you know the 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 little general Dick Advocate, he uh, he came in as well, and uh, he was just the, the the best motivator that I've that I've ever experienced. You know, he he would have, you know, he would have players mate eating eating nails, you know, before the game, just just how 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 well he could motivate people, you know, you, you, you'd run through walls for him. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so that time, you know, he said, and, and the managers that I had, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was not a bad list. That's for sure. I was going to say, you know, you, you look at kind of top managers and top managers from, from Holland and stuff like that. And those three yeah. would be certainly towards the top. So, you know, yeah. what, one experience to have, to have played under those three. Um, also, obviously you, um, you ended your career at Brisbane, Brisbane Raw. Yep. Yep. Was that something in your mind that you know that you wanted to end your career in Australia, or was it just an no. opp opportunity came about? Yeah, no, no, no. There was there was no um, 
there was no course set. There was no plan set. Um, Craig Moore and, and John Aloisi, who were at Brisbane Raw um, and, and players I played with with the national team, were there. John, uh, Craig Moore was the technical director at that stage and, and John Aloisi was the, was the manager. Had a quick chat with him. I was still in Holland um, because after I finished with, um, with my last club in, in, in the UAE, we flew back. We, 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 we went and stayed in, in, in Holland where we still had a place. And we were just in Holland and, and I sort of, yeah, there was no real path. There was no real course. Um, had a good chat with him and, and, and we just said, let's go and have a crack and moved back to Brisbane and, and, you know, not even where I was born. You know, I was born in Sydney. So um, moved to Brisbane and, and I suppose, yeah, we, we enjoyed it and, and, you know, haven't moved since sort of type of thing. We've moved north, but yeah, we enjoyed it. To, uh, we enjoy our time here. And then obviously... Aside from the club football, as you you, you touched on, uh, you played for the Australia national side. Yeah. Talk us about your kind of the early days of that, and you getting your first call ups and that kind of stuff, and and your feelings and emotions of, of kind of when you're first getting told that you that you're going to play for the Australian national side. I, I suppose uh, yes, you're excited, uh, um, but then I was also like a little bit scared in a way to 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 say shit. I'm going to be in the same bus with. Harry Kuehl, uh, uh, Mark Viduka, Mark Schwartz. Uh, uh, I think Mark Bosnich was was almost finishing then at that time. Tony Popovich was there, um, and then I was like, "Yeah, this is this is pretty scary." You know, a young lad, and, and, and these guys are, are, are huge names scoring in Champions Leagues. I remember watching Mark Viduka score that beautiful hat trick against Liverpool, and and you know Harry Harry Kuehl scoring worldies against Arsenal, um, and 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 then I'm like. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in a bit of trouble here. I just got to keep my head down as soon as I get on that bus and, and sort of almost go unnoticed in a way. Um, I was super excited and, and, and super proud to, to, to have, you know, been called up. And, and, and yeah, I suppose, you know, I keep saying dream comes, dreams come true. You know, I think one of my biggest dreams was the first things that we used to see on television was, was, was on Fox Sports and that was the Premier League. And and it was it was Mark Viduka and Harry Kuehl at Leeds, and they were the they were probably the the ones I followed the most. And 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 you know there was other boys playing pay, you know paving the way and Lucas Neal and, and and these sort of lads. And, but but those were the two that I always looked up to in, in a certain aspect. And you know to, to to finally play in the Premier League that was that was sort of the big dream. You know and and you know to play for your country it, it's it's just a massive honour, just a huge honour. Then obviously, um, 2010, the World mm. Cup. Not only did you play for Australia in the World Cup, but you scored against Serbia in the 2010 yeah. World Cup. Again, yeah. you know what? What's that like? You know, not only playing in the World Cup, but scoring in the World Cup. Yeah, no. Like you said, um, give me give me a minute, give me a minute in a World Cup, and I would have been happy. I think you know what I mean. Yeah. Just just get me on there. And um, I was lucky enough to, 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 to have a fantastic manager who unfortunately passed away, Pim for Beek. Um, he had so much confidence in, 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 in myself where, you know, for some, for some reason he'd just say a couple of words and, 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 you know, he'd give me that, I don't know, just that freedom, that type of freedom feeling just to go out there and just try anything. Um, and, and, you know, even my old man, you know, used to always say, go out and have a dig and, 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 you know, you'll never find out if you don't try. And, you know, I don't think I'd ever have a shot like I, 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 I took it at Serbia with 30 yards out. I'd probably never do it again. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it was one of those moments where I suppose everything clicked. The manager saying, you know, giving you that sort of type of freedom, your old man always saying, you know, go out and have a crack. And, and, and you know, I suppose all rolled into one and, and, you know, doing it on that stage at that moment, you know, it was just, yeah, bloody euphoric, basically. And, uh, and uh, yeah, amazing. Yeah, I think I think anybody, like you say, have one minute in a World Cup, um, you know, would be incredible. And obviously for you to, yeah. to kind of represent your country is amazing. I think another thing as well is that when you think about it, it's, you know, for anybody, like you look at, let's say, the England team, for example, now, and a player like Jack Grealish, not yeah. you know, kind of not not necessarily struggling, but not not playing for England as much as he would have liked to have done in the early days, sure. so to, so to speak. You know, you kind of look at the case for for you. You look at the attacking players that Australia had: Viduka, Kuehl, Mark Bresciano, 
you know, Tim, yeah. K, Tim Cahill, stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. so again, it kind of shows, you know, you're, you're competing with these guys, you get into the, yeah. the side, you know, and, and, and you kind of, you know, it's it also, it, it kind of, I suppose it reflects how, how well you've done to get yeah. into to the national side and also to go to mm. a world cup. So, you know, to do that, like you say, to have one minute in the world cup would be incredible. Obviously to do that, like what you've done, obviously must be kind of up there, as you say, with, with yeah. playing in the Premier League. Exactly. No, but the, you, you, yeah, you, you said it perfectly. It was, it, it was, it, if you talk about certain moments, you know, Champions League, uh, uh, Premier League, uh, uh, scoring your first goal, um, scoring in a World Cup, those, you know, those, those moments, you know, you just say, yeah, you have to pick one. You'd, I think you'd always pick a World Cup just because it was the strike and, 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 and the moment my mum and dad were there, my wife was there, you know, all that sort of stuff. It, it, it was, it would have been that moment, but you know, there were, you know, there are moments in your career where, where you would always, you, 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 they remain so fondly and, 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 and yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll sort of remain, I think, because that was such a highlight. That was, was it 2010 World Cup, was that South Africa? Yep. What was that like being in South Africa? Because you could, you know, watching the games. I mean, it's one one part of it, but watching the games, you could you could hear the you know the crowd and the vuvuzelas and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. It just seemed to be you know such a you know great place to to be. Um, mm. You know, you know, not just for football, but for everything in general. So for you traveling there with with Australia, what what was that like? It was brilliant. I think uh, you know they they obviously they put that big emphasis on on security, um, given the fact that being in South Africa and and, and, and such a world um, world event, you know they didn't want to, they didn't want anything um, to happen. Yeah. So um, you know the the security was high, but but the people, um, everybody, you know, so excited just to have such a massive event. Uh, uh, you know, one of the, probably the biggest events in the world um, to be there. Everybody was friendly. You know, even, you know, you, you talk about, you know, the supporters, I suppose, more than anything, you know, such harmony in the stands, you know what I mean? Nice and friendly countries walking in and between each other. Um, uh, you know, that, that's what you want to see at football games. And, and you know, you go on barrack and, and cheer for your, for, your, for your team, win or lose, you know, you go and have a beer afterwards and, 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 and you chat about it and, uh, and you enjoy it and... Uh, I suppose that's how I experienced it. In a way, we were a little bit secluded. I suppose because it was it was that you know security sort of type of thing where you had to be a little bit distance and 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 away from from everybody once you were in camp. But um, you know the experience was amazing. The country's beautiful. Um, stadiums were phenomenal, and and the crowds were brilliant. So um, you know I, I can only you know give my feeling and, and, and how I felt that there, you know, you, you hear stories about 2006 in Germany, how brilliant it was. And, and obviously the 2014 in Brazil and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I had a fantastic experience. Amazing. Amazing. Um, just before we move on to, to the last bit, um, there's one, yeah. one kind of question I want to ask you about, which is kind of topical at the moment, so to speak is VAR yeah. Uh, and VAR, you know, VAR, especially, you know, for us guys with it, with it coming into to the Premier League and stuff like that. Yeah. I kind of, it's like a double-edged question, so to speak. The first one is kind of what, yeah. your, th what are your thoughts on VAR? And the second one is, you know, if you were playing, you know, would you like VAR to be around or not? Um, actually, we had it just before I, I finished. They started bringing it in. I think Australia was one of the first countries who actually started with the VAR. And... Um, you know what? I like it. I do like it um, in regards to, to certain decisions and, and, you know, especially when, when players are trying to, to, you know, you know, you'd almost say cheat the referee, I suppose, in a way, yeah. um, in, in, in certain aspects. Um, I like it when, when, when the VAR can, can play that, but I don't like, I, I, I honestly, I, I love, and, and I, I would probably say the Premier League, only the Premier League, maybe in that certain aspect. I love it because it's fast, it's furious, it doesn't stop, it, it goes. And then when you've got the VAR and 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 you've got referees running to sidelines and it takes forever and everybody's standing around, it defeats the purpose of it. And you lose that interaction and you lose that. You know, there's there's, there's definitely times that I've experienced where it has happened with the VAR and I'm watching a game and it takes forever and big players are standing around that I even just walk away. Or I've missed I've missed the rest of the game just purely for that fact, because it just takes forever. Um, I think if they can somehow, you know, do those things quicker, 
and 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 find a way to 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 fix fix that and and find solutions for that. I think I think it's a good thing to have, definitely. Yeah, I think I think the, the, obviously the, the point you make about the you know the pace and all that kind of stuff, and I suppose the weight for decisions is probably you know a big thing that kind of annoys fans because you kind of sat there and you're like, well, how's it taking so long to make that decision? Yeah. And it yeah. goes back. It well, goes everybody back. sees it. Yeah, we all see it. You know. Yeah, and, it, and I think it goes back to what they say about you know it, it clear and obvious error. Well, if it's clear and obvious, then they shouldn't spend that that long looking at it. They should look and say yeah. if they can't see, if they can't see it within the first 10, 15 seconds, then you know there yeah. you go, done, play on. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a hard one, I suppose. If you you sorry to butt in, it's it's a hard one, I suppose, in regards to you're almost sort of saying, well, why do you actually need a referee, really? Yeah. You know, you could almost have somebody in, in, on the sidelines blowing a whistle because you could almost blow every single thing up and say, okay, you missed that, you missed that. And, you know, it's it's a little bit, yeah, it's 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 so hard uh, to to actually find the happy medium with this technology um, and 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 rules. Um, yeah, it's it, yeah, it's it's too hard, I think, and it's too much at stake at the moment to just keep saying it's going to be trial and error, trial and error. When uh, when you know people and teams are getting uh, you know disadvantaged and 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 I think that's the huge problem at the moment. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I mean, I... it seems like in England we've started micromanaging games and yeah. sort of the interference that VAR is having is becoming too involved rather than like Chris said that the sort of if it is a clear error, it's a clear error. But if it's marginal yeah. and we, we can't see it with one or two runs of the replay, then we just yeah. play on. Um, yeah, that's right. with the offside, We've seen a few with Villa with the offsides where they've had to show the clip and it's probably taken about four or five minutes and it's like yeah. a nostril hair or an arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, and, yeah. and that's and that's the charm of the game where, where you always gave the benefit of the doubt to the striker. You know, that that was the charm of football and, and you know, he made it, he made a fantastic run and exactly what you said, it's a bloody... It's a fingernail, and 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 you, 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 there. I think that yeah, I think that's ridiculous, and uh, and yeah, it, it was always like that. It's the cricket as well. It's the same, I suppose, with all the technology. If you really yeah. look at it, it was you know with LBW and stuff. It was the benefit of the doubt. You gave the benefit of the doubt to the batsman, and it's the same with the strikers. You know, he made a fantastic run. You give the benefit to the striker, and 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 it's play on. So um, it's a yeah. It's a very hard, it's a very hard discussion at the moment, and 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 I don't think it's going to get solved anytime soon, unfortunately. Did yeah. you have the experience of? Because um, I, I noticed in the A League they did do the trial with miking up the referees and letting everybody hear what the referees were discussing at the time. And I think one of the referees, yeah. one of the was it Gillett, one of the referees is now yep. Jared. Jared, Jared UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah no, look, shares the same oh, surname yeah. with myself. Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't. I, look, there wasn't there wasn't too much of, of 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 that. I think it was more. I don't even know if it was it was for a, purely for a ruling and, and a referees thing. I think that was more a a commercial type of thing at, at, at that stage, just to just to have it, it uh, on the TV and give it for a referees point of view, where where actually the supporters can hear what's going on through a referees you know, sort of vision. Basically, that that was that was my understanding of it because it wasn't um it wasn't around long here. Yeah, because yeah. I, mem- I remember watching that. There was I can't think who was playing, but I remember Jared Gillett was the ref, yeah. and um, and he was he was mic'd up, and every decision, um, you know, you, you heard the the other side of the VAR, you know, the VAR were, were getting in touch with him saying you might want to look at that, and then he'd go yeah. over and have a look, and then you could hear the conversations he was having with the captains and stuff like that, and I thought, oh, okay, yeah. that's quite good. Um, yeah. w- w- you know, whether that's something that we'd want to see in England or not, I don't know. I don't know how much. Whether it makes any difference, or I suppose it just, it just, I suppose in theory, it's just looking at accountability, isn't it? You make a referee it's more, accountable or the decision there. Well, then, yeah. but then I suppose you t- you go back and, and and well, like I said, well, you go back and you say, well, you know, do we need a referee? Basically, if if yeah. every every single decision is getting pulled up or somebody speaking in his ear saying, oh, you've missed that, or you've missed that, yeah. and 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 then I was like, well, that well, you know, that was the. That's the charm of it, I suppose, yeah. in a way. That's the charm of football. You know, everybody makes mistakes. People miss penalties. You know, yeah. and, and 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 you know, that's what it is. And and you know, unfortunately, you know, referees, it's a it's a really hard job. But but you know, they do make they, they do make mistakes. But but you know, that's that's the fun of it as well. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. 
Yeah, definitely. You've all you've almost got to bring in an element now of your, your structure on the training ground is regarding how you prepare for the AR and making yeah. sure that you are match savvy. And if you're on yeah. a yellow card nowadays in the Premier League, you, you cannot make a second challenge because you know you're going yeah. to be straight off. It's going to be yeah. the red card's going to be straight out of that pocket as soon as you make that second challenge. So it's almost like yeah. you've got to talk to your players and structure your training sessions around managing that VAR and making sure you are savvy enough to get around it. Completely, yeah. You may you're, you're correct. It's it, it is that because, like you said, you you would always have those players back in the day where even if they're on a yellow, then you know they could do something cheeky off the ball or, or or whatever because it was down the other end of the field and nobody was watching. But these days, that's all that stuff's getting pulled up. So it's um, yeah, you, it it is that, and and I suppose that's that's almost the job for the managers because it's like you said, these things have to start. You almost have to train them really. Because it, 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 these things will happen, and 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 you do have, you do have hot-headed players. So um, you know, it's it's one of those things where where you'll have to you know make players aware because everything that happens now is it's it's going to get found out basically. Yeah, definitely without a doubt. Yeah. So before we let you go and enjoy what's left yep. of your evening in Oz, yeah, we're right. just going to do a, a few quick fire questions at you and like. With anything we quick fire, just say the first thing that comes to your head. And um, some it. of the we've gone over in some of the topics already, so you, you'll have a sort of good idea of Easy. what you're going to say. Anyway. So the first one is um, best manager you have ever played under. Uh, Pinverbeek, definitely. Um, uh, to give a smaller description. Um, <sighs> Everything he did with me, um, it, it was like, mate, he gave me wings. He gave me wings. Um, small little words, uh, you know, even just an arm over me, an arm over my shoulder, something like that, uh, something tiny. It, it, it was enough to, to just get me, you know, yeah, just hungry for more every single time and and huge part of my life. And, and, and you know, even outside of football and, and, and inside, he was, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely Pim. Love it. Yeah, like you say, with um, with a career like you've had when you've moved sort of from Australia across to the other side of the world to Europe and then sort of to England briefly and, and then out to the UAA, it's like those sort of characters and, and those people that help, help mould you as a person and sort of yeah. develop you and sort of the values and beliefs that you get from sort of being guided by them, I suppose. Exactly, exactly right. And, 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 and exactly that, you know, just sort of, uh, you know, values after football. Like you said, um, you know they, they they were they were things, and and there was definitely managers who who wanted to instill that as well. It wasn't just only about the ball. It was like you said, it was you know after football and and things you needed to think about, and and you know whatever you go into after football, you've got those good values of you know never giving up and and always giving hundred percent and 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 you know working hard and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that that is true. Good stuff. Second one, best player you've ever played with? Uh, Harry Kuehl. Harry Kuehl was the was the best player I've ever I've ever played with. Um, if I had to get, if I had to say another one, um, and he wasn't Aussie, then I'd probably say Musa Dembele. He was um, at AZ and and obviously at Tottenham. You guys would know oh, what a player. Um, what a player he uh, was. Yeah, he, like those, like oh, Harry. Harry was was bloody hell. Yeah, just yeah, unbelievable. You know, he, he was just magic. Every, you know, he, I was in awe of him in, in in certain aspects. Every time he, you know, he would do something with the ball, and you know, you, you understand why he he was at such you know great clubs. And you know, unfortunately, he had that bloody you know tough run at Liverpool. But but you know, some of the things he did at Leeds when in his younger days, and even at Liverpool, some of the goals he scored, he was a uh, yeah, he was a uh, he was a great player. And 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 Musa. You couldn't even get the ball off him. You couldn't get the ball off him at training. He was just so strong and and yeah, he was unfortunate. Hey, look, you know, he moved to China. Um, I, I honestly could have felt that, that that you know after Tottenham, he he, he could have went somewhere huge. He could have went to a Barcelona or a Madrid, hands down. And and in my eyes, um, but but you know that you know, I went to Dubai. Musa went to China. It was, um, you know, it's certain, it's certain decisions that 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 people people make, and and that's their good right. So, um, yeah, 
yeah, everybody's got their different journey, haven't they? And uh, I suppose when you look back at it, you can't, you can't have any regrets because these sort of the moves they do um, sort of help you progress as a person, not just on a football field, but as a person and sort of your family life as well and, and the cultural learnings that you potentially have from those mm -hmm. kind of moves. Exactly. So the next one, although it was a short um, one season period at Aston Villa, who was your favourite player of that time when you were playing at Villa? When I was playing with, uh, with the players who I was playing with, um, oh, jeez. Um, good question, mate. Good question. I'm going to think long and hard about this one. Um, there weren't too many good performers in that uh, in that season. So um, now I'd probably say Fabian Delph. If 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 I look at if I looked at the the the, the stuff that, that that he used to do on the training pitch, the effort that he he he, he used to put in, um, he was he was just such a hard worker and 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 at a young age as well and and, and you know he was he was he was brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't probably go past anybody else. I suppose Delphi was was would probably be my pick for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I suppose um, there's a lot of uh, bad sort of uh, well between Villa fans and Fabian Delphi in the way that he left us after saying he was going to stay when he moved to yeah. Man City. But yeah, you, you did see that sort of when he when he stayed fit and he was on that football field and you saw that determination and motivation he had to improve himself as a player uh, and sort yeah. of drag. The rest of the team with him. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you can't you can't fault that's that why. sort of attitude. But that's but that's why he he was one of those players at such a young age where where he, you know he was even trying to demand more from other players and 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 he would try and show that whether it was in the recovery sessions in the gym on the pitch. Um, he, he, you know he he was great in that and and you know I did follow that saga and and you know it was unfortunate how it uh, how it developed and and you know because I think he really did some good stuff at Villa and, and he did give it all every time he went on it, on that pitch. And, and yeah, unfortunately in the football world, things happen and, 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 and players make transfers. But uh, yeah, I know that he did give everything for, for, for Villa when he did play, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. That's good to hear. Um, so your favourite goal you've ever scored and, and probably I think I've got maybe an idea of what you may say here, but uh, go ahead. It's done. We've already spoken about it. It was at the World Cup. It was um, it was against Serbia. So um, it, you know, <laughs> it, it's everything. It's everything around it. The moment, the the the, the timing. Um, yeah, it, it, like I said, I, I probably would never have tried. You know, from from that range ever again in in in, in my whole life. And and you know, like I said, that that that. You know, my preseason leading up the camp that I had, I was flying. I felt great. Um, I was ready to go, and 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 everything just worked. It clicked, and 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 you know that's a that's how I suppose that 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 goal eventuated. So, uh, you know, such a great uh, great moment for me. Yeah, exactly. And and like you said, your dad said, if you don't have a dig, you don't you don't know what could happen. So yeah, great, Correct. great moment for you right. and your family and obviously the whole nation in Australia at the time scoring that goal. Um, next exactly. question, your best friend in football, in the football community? Oh, um, Jesus. Um, best friend. Wow. Um, I've got a few. Um, uh, there's, there's, there's probably two um, who I've got really good, good, you know, good relationships with. Um, one is Gilles Zouetz. He's a Belgium uh, player, uh, Belgium international. Um, I played with him in my first years um, at Excelsior when I went to Feyenoord. Um, and then we actually transferred from different clubs to AZ at the same time um, and played three seasons there. Um, he lives in Belgium now. He's actually the under 23s coach at uh, FC Antwerp. I've still got fantastic contact with with him and we sort of grew up together. So um, he was one of them. Um, another close mate would be Carl Valeri. Um, we were we were roomies forever um, with with the national team. And um, yeah, yeah played, he played in Italy for what, 10 years, um, went back home. And, and I think he's He's a player's liaison at, at, at Melbourne Victory in one of the A-League clubs. But, um, yeah, those, those two are probably my best, my best sort of mates in, 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 in the football scene. 
Excellent. Great. Great to hear. And then the final yeah. one before we move on to the last part of the interview, um, your best memory in football. Um, you probably already mentioned it, but yeah, go ahead. Best memory? Um, oh. You know what? You know, I've already given the World Cup a bit of a, a bit of a rap. So um, I, I would probably, I'd probably, I mean, it's, it's too hard. It's too hard to sort of choose between the Premier League and, and, and the Champions League song. Um, going out, going out and, and, and walking out for the first time and starting you know, one of the games and listening to the Champions League song um, was, 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 was something really special. You know, that, that, that childhood dream of, of listening to the Champions League song and it's got that, such a rhyme about it. Um, that was that was bloody special, you know. Um, that 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 was pretty special to play to play in the Champions League, and 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 like I said, to play in the Premier League was 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 something that I grew up with, you know. Watching, you know, Harry Kuehl and Mark Viduka, and before that, my idols in in, in David Ginella and Dennis Burkamp and these sort of guys to 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 actually go go and play at, at those clubs and play in those stadiums was was, were, yeah, my my career highlights. What yeah, one. Th- one one thing we didn't ask, uh, which yeah. you probably should have done. What about the best player you've played against? Um, defenders wise, um, we played a friendly game, uh, national team against Brazil. We lost six zero. Um, I think Thiago Silva didn't probably give me a touch of the ball for ninety minutes. So. Um, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was just. He was just a beast. But um, yeah, that was. Oh, that would have been about. What was that? That was just before the 2010. It would have been 2009. So um, probably ten years ago. But yeah, he was. He was phenomenal. So athletic, an absolute machine. Um, strong as. Uh, yeah, he was probably the scariest, scariest sort of defender that I, that I played up against. And if you go back to the eight nil absolute squashing that we had at Chelsea. Um, Frank Lampard was so unplayable that day. Um, those were, those were the, the, the two ones that probably scarred me, scarred me in, in regards to, uh, yeah, yeah. Horrible defeats, but, but also performance wise where you, you, it was like, you couldn't even get near the ball because they were so good. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose those kind of, you know, uh, like you say, a six nil and an eight nil. They kind of, for the wrong reasons, stand in your mind. But I suppose at the same yeah. time, at the same time, you're losing against a team that's obviously played really well. So there are, you know, yeah. there's going to be performances from the other side that are just going to stick in your mind, isn't there? That's right. That's right. Correct. Um. Yeah. Well, a, a massive thanks for coming on. Um, no worries. You know, it's, it's been Pleasure. it's been amazing chatting to you. Um. You know. Like we've, we've just said, you've had a you know you've had a fantastic career. Um, I, I did say at the time three three of the best um, Dutch managers you played under. I think four if you include um, obviously with the Australian national team. So you know you, you kind of looking back at your career, yeah. it's, it's been fantastic. So it's been amazing for us to talk to you. So really appreciate your time. No worries. It was uh, it was fun. It was good to it was good to chat with you, blokes. Nice one, very and, much appreciated. And before we go, Brett, what what is next for Brett Holman? What do you sort of, what are your desires and aims and objectives going oh, forward? Mate, it, it, that's the worst part for footballers. I've, I've actually start my, I've started my own little um, football academy program up here on the Sunshine Coast because there's not a lot of there's not a lot of football available up here. So I've started my own little um, academy, um, but it's so hard. It's so hard when 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 football's been been everything for you know, a good 20, 25 years. And then all of a sudden it stops. And then it's like, uh, I've still got half, you know, at least a half a life to go and, and, yeah, and I don't know what to do anymore. So um, I'm still finding my feet. Um, it's not easy, but, um, but I'm enjoying the, the, the coaching side of it and, and, and coaching kids. It's, 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 it's fun, but, um, but yeah, it's a, uh, finding out, finding out what the next phase will be. It's, it's, yeah, we're still, uh, we're still in the unknown at the moment. So uh, you never know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, definitely. It's about enjoy, enjoying that time now, enjoying the relaxation yeah. and not having that structure of training every day and um, spending no time with your baths. family. And- no more ice <laughs> baths. No more ice baths, that's for sure. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. 
if you do enjoy the coaching side of things, you've got a few contacts to call on to uh, hopefully get you back over maybe in Europe coaching in Holland or in England. Or, you, never, uh, you never know if that's, if that's the, uh, if that, if that in, ends up being the ambition, then uh, like you said, there's a, uh, there's, you know, we, we, we've got some good contacts that I've got, um, which is, which is great to have. So um, yeah, if that ever eventuated, I don't, uh, you know, we can have a crack at that, but who knows? It's it's very early, and I'm not going to speculate. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, and that way of life in Australia is um, quite a. It's too hard. Sort it's of too hard to turn away. <laughs> yeah, it's too exactly. hard. Yeah, I, I, don't, I definitely don't miss the uh, the European winters anyway. So uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, definitely something I'm not uh, keen on going back to anytime soon. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it pulls apart, isn't it? Really, like we said before, and you know. Spending top lot, we're locked locked in effectively, and the weather's crap. But then, obviously, for for you being Australia, it's yeah, you know, it's completely different with it, you know, weather wise, isn't it? That's right. No, like I said, we're 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 fortunately enough to be uh, to be to be you know to be blessed in in a, in a, in an area that we are at the moment, and and you know, like I, like I said, it's uh, you know we've we've got family everywhere. My wife's stuck in Holland, and her parents are stuck in Holland. So, uh, you know, there's enough stories of of uh, you know, of, of hardship with, with what you guys are going through and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, we're thinking of everybody over there, which is, uh, which is uh, easy to say, but we definitely are. So, uh, and hopefully it, it eventually gets sorted sooner rather than later. Yep. Well, fingers crossed. Um, we'll get sorted, but a massive thanks, Brett Holman. No um, look after yourself. Good luck with the coaching no and stay safe. Take care. Good luck with the Villa. Cheers, Brett. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they go for Europe. You never know. Hopefully, Let's fingers hope so. fingers crossed. It's uh, it's it's been a good start so far. Hopefully, we could push it has on. Has been, has been. So, so yeah, definitely. Nice one. Cheers, Brett. We'll speak to you soon. See you, boys. See you, boys. Take care. Ta da. Ta da. Bye.